Hello everybody and welcome to a tutorial on how to speedrun Oceania. This is the first video in a series of videos that I have planned where I want to step through uh, speedrunning and moving in a bunch of different uh, locations country by country in, in GeoGuessr. And the reason that I'm making this series is because there are a lot of videos out there on tips for region guessing, particularly in no-move games, tips on landscapes, tips on architecture, all of that sort of thing. But there aren't a lot of videos on how to find information in different countries and the types of useful information for pinpointing and particularly in moving games, just finding where you are in all the different countries. So in this video I'm going to step through uh, Oceania country by country and uh, give an explanation of the types of useful info that you can find in each country. So uh, the first country that we'll look at is Australia. So by far and away the two most useful pieces of information that you can find are street signs and highway signs. Uh, the vast majority of street signs in Australia will look something like this, black text, on a white background. Um, sometimes they'll have details on them that are specific to a city or a suburb. So these ones say Marrickville, that's a suburb in Sydney. Uh, but most of them are just this uh, black text on a white background with uh, nothing in particular to distinguish them. The important thing is that in Australia nearly all streets have street signs. Uh, and the street signs almost invariably match uh, what's on Google Maps, so they make pinpointing much easier. Then we have highway signs. So the highway signs, almost always green, uh, with white text, and the road number is very often uh, on the top. So this is uh, a highway sign in Victoria. A lot of the Victorian highway signs actually have this little thing that says Vic Roads, so that's Another useful thing to keep an eye out on, most of the other states don't have something like that, but in Victoria often you'll find Vic Roads uh, written on a sign. And obviously uh, road numbers are really important because they can you can scan for them and the road numbers on these signs match what's on the map, so you don't need to worry about the highway system having changed too much. Now there are lots of other pieces of information that you can find, uh, banners, and uh, signs that say, you know, the city that you're in. So this is a banner, it says Goulburn. Goulburn is a city in New South Wales. Um, and uh, this shop, this says Warwick uh, Watchmakers and Jewelers. Warwick is um, a, a town in Queensland. So yeah, uh, being familiar with lots of towns will help you identify, at the very least, you know, whether because in this case Warwick isn't the name of the brand, it's it's the name of the city. Uh, and if you can identify Warwick or you can identify Goulburn, then you, you know that it's referring to the city. So again, something that I'll make reference to time and time again throughout this series is that one of the best things that you can do to improve your moving gameplay pinpointing skills is just becoming more and more familiar with different cities in, in different countries. And the more cities and the more towns you know, uh, the faster you'll be able to find things. Uh, other sources of information, so bins. Uh, bins are often quite useful for pinpointing. So this bin has uh, a logo of the Brisbane Council on it. It also says I Heart B and E, B and E, an abbreviation of Brisbane. So uh, that bin is. Uh, obviously going to put you in Brisbane, and numerous other bins in Australia will have uh, council logos or sometimes the city written on them. So those are really handy. Um, definitely familiarise yourself with uh, the Canberra bins. They all have the ACT government logo on them. That's a really useful meta for identifying Canberra. Then you have bus stops. Um, bus stops are perhaps less useful than some of the others for pinpointing, but they do help you identify uh, what state you're in quite quickly. 
each state or territory has different bus designs. So Tasmania has this yellow one. This orange style is in uh, Victoria. In New South Wales, you'll see the one with the Denmark-like hook over the top, and then uh, also this uh, blue design where with the B in uh, in some of the more major cities, particularly in Sydney. Um, this blue and yellow one is a Canberra bus stop. The yellow hook with the, the blue sign is, is Queensland, and, and then you've got the South Australia and, and Western Australia has this sort of pole-like design. So those are the bus stops, and those can be useful for identifying, at the very least, what state you're in. Also useful are phone codes. They're not that handy, mainly because you don't see a lot of them, but the important thing to remember, 07 Queensland, 02 New South Wales and ACT, 03 is Victoria and Tasmania, and 08 is Northern Territory, South Australia and Western Australia. And uh, if you want to learn them to a little bit more detail, uh, this diagram here has, um, you know, some up to uh, the second digit. So that can kind of be handy, although you don't see phone codes that often in Australia. Now, I mentioned highways earlier. Highways are by far and away uh, some of the most useful information that you can get in Australia. So there are a number of different levels of highways in Australia. You have alphanumeric highways. So those are A roads, B roads, C roads, and D roads, but you can ignore the D roads. Um, then there are the national highways, which will have like a crest that says national. Um, and then there's national and state routes. Uh, there's also tourist drives, but those are very difficult to scan for. They aren't marked on the Google map. So uh, tourist drives aren't particularly useful. Uh, as are metro roads, uh, because they are just within cities. So, um, a couple of important patterns. So, you'll note, uh, I've, I've circled some, some key uh, indicators here. So, Queensland and Western Australia are the only states where you'll get these white national route roads and the blue state route roads. And you'll see those marked on the Google map. So the blue shields particularly are Queensland and Western Australia only. And also Victoria. But in Victoria you'll only get those blue shields in the, and around the Melbourne area. Um, and in terms of the alphanumeric roads, Western Australia doesn't have any. Uh, it has national highways and the national routes and state routes, but it doesn't have any alphanumeric highways. So if you're on an alphanumeric highway, you'll never be in Western Australia. Now, in terms of the alphanumeric highways, you've got M roads, A roads, B roads, and C roads. M roads are generally in and around cities. They are... Uh, and there are also far less M roads than there are A roads, B roads, and C roads. Um, now, a couple of important points. Queensland doesn't have any B roads. So if you're on a B road, you're not in Queensland. Uh, all the other states do. And C roads are only in Tasmania and Victoria and Northern Territory. And like 95% of the C roads are in Tasmania and Victoria. So if you're on a C road... And it doesn't look tropical at all, you're in Tasmania or Victoria. Uh, I want to give uh, a special uh, note to uh, the highways of Victoria and the way in which they're arranged. So they kind of go in a wheel pattern. So the hundreds are west of Victoria, the two hundreds are sort of northwest. And uh, the 300s are kind of north, and then the 400s and 500s are east and northeast of, of Melbourne. So they kind of go in a, a wheel pattern around, uh, which is, is makes them quite easy to scan for. But uh, unfortunately, none of the other states 
have uh, their highways arranged very neatly at all. So scanning for roads in the other in the other states and territories can be quite difficult. Although it's easier in some like South Australia and the Northern Territory where there aren't as many roads. Now, Australia has uh, a lot of highways and, and as I've said, they aren't very well organized. The Australian highway system is a bit of a mess. So sometimes scanning for highways can be very difficult. So one of the best things that you can do is actually to learn uh, a number of the major highways. And I've got uh, a few listed here. The Bruce Highway goes from Brisbane to Cairns. The Capricorn Highway goes uh, inland from Rockhampton to Barcaldine. The Leichhardt Highway goes from Rockhampton down to the New South Wales border. And the Flinders Highway goes from Townsville out to Cloncurry. Uh, I've put the names of these highways because these will show up on highway signs, but uh, also the numbers, because the numbers are what you'll see on the map and they're scan much more scannable. It's helpful to know both because sometimes when you see a sign, uh, it's easier to remember the name, Le Leichhardt Highway, than just a number, A5. Now, moving on to New South Wales, the Prince's Highway is a really, really long highway that goes from Sydney all around the south coast to Adelaide. So that's one of the big highways in Australia, and if you're on the Prince's Highway, you're going to be on the coast somewhere between Sydney and Adelaide. The Hume Highway goes from Sydney down to Melbourne. The New England Highway goes from, uh, I believe, Newcastle up to... Queensland. The Sturt Highway goes from Bathurst out to Adelaide. Actually, I don't think it goes from Bathurst. <laughs> I might have that wrong. The Barrier Highway goes from Ningen to uh, Adelaide. And the Mitchell Highway is the one that goes from Bathurst into Queensland. The Western Highway uh, now in Victoria, the Western Highway goes from Melbourne out to the South Australia border. The Sunraysia Highway goes from Ballarat up to very near the New South Wales-Victoria border. The Murray Valley Highway follows the course of the Murray River on the New South Wales-Victoria border. And the Midland Highway does a bit of a loop. from starts from Geelong, which is just southwest of Melbourne, and it does a bit of a loop. Uh, around Melbourne through sort of the more mountainous area uh, and it, it starts as the A300 and then becomes the B300. Now in South Australia the Lincoln Highway and the Flinders Highway uh, go um, on opposite sides of uh, the peninsula. Um, important that you don't get the Flinders Highway, that's the B100 in South Australia, confused with um, the other Flinders Highway, that's the A6 in Queensland. But hopefully the uh, landscape should be distinguishable. The Augusta Highway uh, and the Air Highway go uh, from Augusta, uh, go from, uh, so the Augusta Highway goes from Adelaide to Port Augusta, and then the Air Highway goes from Port Augusta out to uh, Norseman in Western Australia. The Stewart Highway goes from Adelaide to Darwin. Very famous uh, history behind that. Uh, John MacDonald Stewart was the guy who first trekked across the middle of Australia and the highway essentially follows the route that he found across the center of Australia. So that's the A87, uh, and it becomes the A1 uh, when it reaches Daly Waters in the Northern Territory, uh, which is a bit southeast of Darwin. But the majority of the highway is the A87. The Victoria Highway, uh, now looking at the Northern Territory, the Victoria Highway goes from Catherine out to the Northern Territory Western Australia border. 
The Barclay Highway is the only paved road between Queensland and the Northern Territory. Uh, it's a bunch of roads, but it's the N66 in uh, Northern Territory, and it's the N2 in Queensland. In Western Australia now, the Albany Highway goes from Perth to Albany. It's the 30, so these blue state shields are what you're scanning for in Western Australia, as well as uh, these white, like, national routes. The Brand Highway is the National Route 1. It goes from just north of Perth up to Geraldton on the coast. The Great Eastern Highway, very original naming, is in fact not in the east of Australia. It's in Western, it's in, uh, Western Australia, but it's called the Great Eastern Highway because it goes out east of Perth. Uh, it's the N1, uh, sorry, it's um, the N94. Um, the uh, name there is written incorrectly. Um, the Great Northern Highway is the N95 from Perth to Port Hedland, and then the N1 from Port Hedland up to Wyndham, just before the Northern Territory border. The Northwest Coastal Highway is the National One, and it goes from Geraldton to Port Hedland. The South Coast Highway is also the National Route 1, and it goes from Esperance uh, out to Walpole on along the south coast of Western Australia. You'll note that a lot of these uh, highways share the same name. A lot of them are just National Route 1. So knowing the names of the highways is quite useful because you can distinguish quite easily, okay, South Coast Highway versus Northwest Coastal Highway. The Great Southern Highway which is the State Route 120, goes from just east of Perth down to Cranbrook, and the South Western Highway, which is um, the, uh, it's not, it's not this red road on the map, I couldn't find uh, a map of it, it is the National Route 1 and 20, that is this uh, Western Highway that goes from Albany up along the West Coast up to Perth. Finally, uh, Tasmania. I didn't forget about it, unlike uh, most Australians, because Tasmania is indeed pretty forgettable. <laughs> Apologies to Tasmanians, you're not actually that bad. Uh, the Bass Highway is the sort of north coast Tasmania highway. It goes from Launceston up along the coast, connecting the major cities up there. And then the Midland Highway, which is also the N1, goes from uh, Launceston down to uh, Hobart. So, that concludes Australia. A lot of highways to learn, um, but you don't obviously have to learn all of the names, uh, as most of these are pretty scannable, and when you find highway signs, often it's towns that are more scannable than highway names or highway numbers. But at the same time, knowing all these highway names and numbers can help a lot in terms of speeding up the process of finding things. I said we're done with Australia, we're not quite yet. A couple of offshore territories to cover. Christmas Island uh, has uh, this ute, which Americans call a pickup truck. I'm going to call it a ute because that's what we call it in Australia, and Christmas Island is in Australia, so I'm going to be very patriotic. So it's a ute, short for utilitarian vehicle, and the ute is what they use to drive around on Christmas Island. You can see this sort of silver metal truck bed at the end of it. That'll help you identify Christmas Island. Now, Christmas Island, uh, there's a few distinct locations that you can use to help speed up pinpointing. The built-up areas are all in sort of around Flying Fish Cove up in the northeast of the island. There's a boat trekker that goes around the north coast of the island. I've marked the approximate route there on the map to the side. There's a bunch of forest trekkers dotted in and around the island. And there's a golf course trekker up on the northeast coast. Some of the golf course trekker is actually driven in the, the car, the Google car. Next we have the Cocos Islands. So there's a snorkel ute, this ute with a snorkel and uh, a similar looking uh, tray bed on the West Island. The West Island runway is pretty distinct. It's the widest paved road on all of the Cocos Islands. 
there's a follow car behind you. Uh, yeah, it just looks like a runway, and that's down here on the West Island. Van Tam has a car as well. Uh, sometimes the car isn't particularly visible, but it's sort of this box. It doesn't look like the Ute, and it doesn't have a snorkel. But perhaps most notably in Van Tam, you've got this pavement with these bricks in quite an intricate sort of pavement style. And that's honestly more recognisable than the car. So if you see this pavement, uh, click Bentam. Pula Loire, which is the island up north, uh, has a pretty distinct landscape. I've got a photo of it here. There's a bunch of other trekkers and boats. You can go and learn those if you want. But uh, it's probably not the most high yield tips for moving. Um, next we have uh, New Zealand. So, New Zealand, uh, like Australia, highway signs are very useful. Highway signs are green. They will have the highway number on them in a red shield. So this is the Route 1. Now, you can also find uh, bridge markers. So this is also the Route 1. The, the bridge marker will be over a bridge, and uh, it says the bridge number. And you can learn you know, where the bridges start, because they count up by number. So on the one, I believe it starts at zero up the top of New Zealand, and they increase in number on the way down. So a little bit like kilometer markers in that way, but obviously they aren't evenly spaced. Um, and obviously bridge markers are also very helpful because they just tell you what highway number you're on. Now not every bridge is on a numbered highway, so sometimes you won't get a bridge marker. And not every bridge on a marked highway has a bridge number. Highway numbers are much more scannable in New Zealand than they are in Australia. They're very, very useful. So the single digit state highways are the big long ones. The one goes from the top of New Zealand down to the bottom. So it appears on both islands. It's the only highway that does that. The two goes from just south of Auckland and wraps around uh, the east coast of the North Island. The three reps around the west coast, and then the four and the five are inland on the North Island. The six goes right the way down uh, a fair portion of the west coast of the South Island before heading inwards. The eight does a loop from south of Christchurch down to, I believe, Dunedin. And the seven goes inland across the uh, mountains. I believe it goes through Arthur's Pass. Now, the double-digit state highways are ordered very nicely. <laughs> the diagram there pretty much says it all. Those are your double-digit numbers, and they're very, very, very scannable. Phone codes are also useful in New Zealand. There's not that many of them, but they do help divide things up a little bit. Important to remember is that 03 is South Island, and then all the others are North Island. So the South Island only has one phone code, and the diagram here pretty much explains itself. Bins, like in Australia, can be pretty useful. Uh, a number of them have council logos and will even have the city name spell, spelled out. These are some Christchurch bins. It says Christchurch City Council. Shops, again, uh, useful just like in Australia. Uh, so here you can see uh, this is Tekawiti Pharmacy. Tekawiti is a city in the North Island. Uh, now, that banner there that you can also see uh, near the yellow street signs uh, that also says take weedy. So, like in Australia, banners are also pretty useful. A number of towns and stuff have them. Distance signs. So, street. I should have mentioned uh, street signs in uh, New Zealand very useful. Um, just like in Australia, most of the streets have uh, names, and on a number of them you get distance signs. So, some of them will be in this yellow style. Uh, a lot of street signs in New Zealand are blue, and often they'll have distances to places. So keep an eye out for, uh, if you're looking for distances and, and towns, they, they will often be written on these sort of street signs rather than just on highway signs. New Zealand has also a few uh, regional bus stops. The main ones are Auckland, Wellington and Christchurch. And if you want to have a look at this diagram, feel free to pause the video and, and have a look at what the different bus stop designs look like. 
they aren't quite as regional as or or state divided as um, the ones in Australia. Now, one of the golden metas in New Zealand is uh, street signs. So many many different cities have uh, or different districts have different styles of street signs. Uh, I won't go over all of these here. There's a whole ton of them. I've got uh, a link to a map made by Brocco2, which is an excellent map that I use to learn a bunch of the New Zealand street signs. They help with working out what city you're in uh, really amazingly. Next we have Guam. So, uh, Guam out in the Pacific Ocean, uh, sort of roughly near Taiwan if you're trying to look for it on the map. Uh, so Guam has an antenna and a little bit of the roof rack that sticks out on the left side of the car. So those can be used to identify Guam. Also green street signs. So when comparing Guam to the Northern Marianas Islands, because they look quite similar, they're both offshore territories of the US that are, you know, only a few hundred kilometers apart. Uh, Guam has the roof rack and the antenna and green street signs, whereas Northern Marianas Islands don't have the roof rack, they do have an antenna, and uh, Northern Marianas Islands, uh, there are blue street signs. In terms of useful information, uh, signage, although it often isn't that useful, but sometimes you find useful clues, like this is a sign for Tumon Bay Business Center, and Tumon Bay is a, a suburb that uh, you can find if you scan for it on the map. Uh, highway shields and numbers are also useful, but I'd give a word of warning here. A lot of the uh, numbered uh, shields that you see in the Street View coverage don't match what's marked on the map. Don't know exactly why that's the case, but unfortunately it is. <laughs> don't know whether the highway numbering system has been changed since the coverage was done, or simply they were entered incorrectly, but be wary. Sometimes they will match, sometimes they won't. And highway numbers, you can scan for them on the map. They show up, but as I said, be wary. Sometimes they won't match what you see in Street View. Topography is also just a pretty useful tip. Guam's much more flatter up north than it is down south, so that can help you with working out roughly what part of Guam you're in just from a quick scan around at the start. Next we have the Northern Marianas Islands. Antenna, no roof rack, as I said before, and blue street signs. The coverage is only on the North Island. Uh, signage, again, can help you out. This is, is uh, a shop which says uh, New Cagman Market. Cagman is uh, a town in the Northern Marianas Islands. So, again, not quite as common as, saying somewhere like New South Wales, or, sorry, uh, Australia or New Zealand, but you can find useful signage in uh, NMI and in Guam that can help you uh, look for suburbs or towns on the map. Uh, highway shields do exist in the Northern Marianas Islands, but they're few and far between, and they aren't marked on the map. On, so you can't easily scan for them. So, uh, yeah. Highway shields generally only useful for working out that you're in NMI. Uh, finally, we have uh, American Samoa to cap off our US offshore territories. So American Samoa has three different cars. This black ute in uh, the West Island, the main island. This silver car with an antenna on the middle island. And then this black uh, car on uh, the farthest east island, which doesn't have the uh, truck bed on the back. So the cars luckily are pretty uh, distinguishable and uh, they will help you work out what island you're on. Signage again useful in American Samoa. So this is Alafau Elementary School. Uh, Alafau is a little town on the main island couple of distinct locations, the Manua Olesega Bridge uh, connects the two islands of Manua and Olesega, that's those two uh, central islands. Um, very, very beautiful location and quite distinct. 
Ofu Airport is, uh, I have labelled that incorrectly on the map, it's pretty much where the Vaotu Lodge POI is, uh, that you can see on the southwest part of uh, Manua Island. Uh, it's a pretty distinct location, and the car actually has some orange uh, straps on it. This is not Ofu Airport. Uh, this is the main built-up area of American Samoa. Again, my apologies for typos or inaccuracies uh, in this. Um, so if you see a built-up area in American Samoa, you are where that red dot is on the map, on the main island. There's nowhere else that's sort of built up like this in American Samoa. And of note, particularly in American Samoa, geography is very, very useful. So there are lots of bays, lots of pretty distinct coves and geographical shapes, and uh, those help massively in terms of pinpointing where you are. You can line up coastlines and bays and docks and whatnot. Uh, we have next the Pitcairn Islands. Um, the main Pitcairn Islands, where, where the uh, name Pitcairn Islands is, has a trekker. I don't believe it's in ACW, but what is in ACW is a tracker where you can see the person's hair down on this southwest island. Uh, you probably will very, very rarely see Pitcairn Islands when playing, but particularly the hair tracker is a useful one to know. Uh, Vanuatu has one official tracker on uh, the island where I've marked it on the map. Uh, it's distinguishable because the person walking in front of you has a red headdress. So, if you want to keep learning, there are plenty of further resources. Uh, the Plonkett Guides, which I have drawn on a bit to make this video uh, and use for a lot of my study, are excellent. They cover uh, a bit more detail in some parts than what I've gone into in this video. So if you're looking to learn a country, the Plunkett Guides are always a great thing to look through. And there's one for everything that I've, I've covered in this video. If you're looking to learn Australia, uh, Zigzag's Definitive Australia Guide uh, covers a lot of extra useful matters that can help you particularly identify what state you're in quite quickly. Um, which is always, you know, useful just to have a sense of where you are geographically within a country, even if you do some scanning and pinpoint where you are to a higher degree of accuracy. Uh, 40 Nempan has a great document that covers a whole lot of Australian LGA logos. LGA is a local government authority. Um, now, there's 500 odd of them or something in there. Uh, and you absolutely don't need to learn all of them, but some of them are quite useful. Uh, Simon Goose's Region Guessing in New Zealand is an excellent uh, resource for just learning New Zealand in general, and there's some uh, city-specific matters in there as well. Uh, the New Zealand District Council Street Signs document by FI is um, a great document that covers uh, in heaps of detail a huge number of street signs. It essentially covers all the street signs you could ever know. Uh, and of course, the most important document out there, the intersections of Papega Avenue by Mate Potato, which is <laughs> a document that covers all of the intersections on a street called Papega Avenue in the Northern Marianas Islands. Very important, absolute must read. You can't play Geogessa uh, until you've uh, read through that one. Maps for practice. Uh, Intersection Guesser Oceania is a great map if for some reason you want to play Oceania on its own. I wouldn't necessarily recommend that, but uh, if you want to for some reason, then Pastekachi has made an excellent map for that. Um, it does have Hawaii in it, which I haven't covered in this video, but uh, Nonetheless, a great map if you want to practice all the countries that I've covered here. Mm. Australia has a bajillion maps made for it, but uh, I would highly recommend uh, for moving games, uh, playing a balanced Australia or intersection guesser Australia or a pinpointable Australia. 
If you're looking for a no move pinpointable map to practice no move pinpointing, Figsy Games has put together a wonderful map, a pinpointable Australia hand picked. All of the locations should be pinpointable without moving at all, which is amazing. It's got a huge number of locations, so honestly, uh, a big, big feat there by Figsy to put that all together. Uh, fantastic map. Um, New Zealand, again, AI Gen New Zealand, Intersection Guess in New Zealand, and a pinpointable New Zealand um, are all great um, for practice. And then Pastique Hatchy has made a bunch of great intersection guesser maps for Christmas in Cocos Islands, Guam, NMI, and American Samoa. So if you want to practice those, then those maps are great. Finally, if you want to learn a little bit more, as I said before, learning city and town names very, very useful for moving and speedrunning. Uh, one of the most valuable things that you can invest time into doing. Uh, learning distinct roads, coverage metas, and region guessing. I haven't covered that in this video because there's already loads of videos on that sort of thing, and documents and guides, but obviously improving the no-move side of your game will indirectly improve uh, moving and speedrunning. So learning distinct roads helps you pinpoint much faster. And as I mentioned before, council and local government authority logos in Australia and New Zealand can be quite useful, although a lot of them are very obscure and you may never get use out of them at any point while playing GeoGuessr. And that covers the information part of this video. Next, I'm going to play a 25k speedrun on Intersection Guesser Oceania and step you through how I'm pinpointing each round, uh, like I did in my video on how to speedrun GeoGuessr. So, without further ado, let's jump in and play some Intersection Guesser Oceania. Welcome back. I have here the map Intersection Guesser Oceania, made by the excellent mapper Pastek Hachi. And I'm going to do a 25k speedrun on this map to step through the process of finding info and using it to pinpoint where you are. I'm going to discuss the different types of info that I've mentioned previously in this video and show you guys how you can use those. Now I'm not aiming for the fastest time out there, instead I'm going to go fairly slowly with the aim of stepping through my thought process very uh, logically and very clearly so that you can see what info I'm looking for what info I'm trying to remember and store in my memory, uh, what's important and what's not important. So, we start out in the Northern Marianas Islands. We have the antenna, but no roof rack, and blue street signs. And we start at Asperdido Road and Chalan MSGR Martinez. Okay, Saipan is one of the biggest cities, or or um, it's it's one of the islands. So we have Saipan, Tinian, and Rota. So that unfortunately doesn't tell me much. Uh, but I'm going to note. Okay, I cannot travel to my northeast. Uh, I'm going to travel uh, southwest. Okay, I cannot travel southwest. And to try traveling southeast. Hmm. Is the coverage broken? Okay, the coverage is broken. What we can do then is scan for intersections with road angles that fit. And thankfully, that isn't too hard on the Nav Marathon. So we have 
Chalan, and it turns out that MSGR is short for Monsignor Martinez, and I have found this road here. Simply by looking for a major road with that road angle. And we are at the intersection of Chilan Monsignor Martinez with Asperdido Road. So, this says Asperdido, it also says uh, Tun Kyoshi, but uh, all the angles line up, the road curves east as it goes south, and uh, we also have Guangdong Hardware there. You can see Guangdong Hardware and Guangdong Hardware here. So that confirms as much as you could possibly want that we are at that intersection. Even though the coverage is broken, I barely had to move to find the information there. Okay, next up we have uh, New Zealand. And uh, I have Tuakau, Pukekohe, and Bombay. And I started in front of a KFC and some sort of petrol station. Now, I also have the one to Auckland, and in fact this major road will probably have something telling me where I'm exiting to. So we're at the one, And this may have distances as well. Perfect. This is exactly the sort of thing that I was looking for. So the one heading north, we are 45 kilometers away from Auckland. Pukekohe is here. Bombay is there. So we would have started here. The KFC was where we started at. And with this uh, petrol station here to our north. So we would have started just here. Does the road angle match? Yes, it does. And we're just at the intersection here. Perfect. Nice start. Okay, now we have Australia. So, the road that we start at is Sugarloaf Road. And I would love to be able to see, I believe that that says the Shire on it. But, unfortunately, this road is only covered in Gen 1. So, I'm going to head uh, south, noting that I started at Sugarloaf Road. And uh, south, I headed over a bridge. In terms of a vibe, guess this feels very much like New South Wales or Victoria. I know... Um, there may be a Sugarloaf Mountain down in the Victorian Alps, but I'm not going to bet that it's Victoria just because one Sugarloaf Road. Now I'm going to use my fast movement here because uh, there's not a lot of particularly useful info on the road that I'm seeing at the moment, so I don't need to stop and look around much uh, until I hit an intersection with a more major road. So I'm going to keep moving until I find some more useful information. Perfect. Okay, so I have found a bin with useful information. This says City of Greater Bendigo. And I recognize Bendigo as a town in Victoria. Now, I don't know exactly where that is or where we are, but I'm currently entering a town which is called Axdale. So I can have a bit of a look around 
and I find Axdale here. Now I note that I headed mostly south into Axdale, so I would have headed along the Axdale Gurnong Road. And I imagine that somewhere along here is the intersection with Sugarloaf Road. So immediately, just based off of a bin, the 5k comes very quickly. The angle matches, it curves east as it goes north, and it curves west, oh, oh, sorry, east again as it goes south. So that should be the 5k. Three down, two to go. Okay, looks like for round four we have a little more New Zealand. It's quite hilly, and there is sea to my south. So I'm going to head northeast from the starting location. And we hit Gen 4, thankfully. Keeping my eyes peeled for bins and signs. We have Lifey Crescent, and this is a Wellington street sign. So we have Lifey Crescent and Melbourne Road, with C to our south, in some form. And uh, I imagine if I check one of these bins, this will confirm. It's difficult to see, but I, I suspect that the bin says Wellington. So we have Melbourne Road, Melrose Road, and Mersey Street, which could be a little bit difficult to find. But I'm going to keep heading until I find uh, more findable streets. So we have Mersey Street and uh, Clyde Street. So we're on Mersey Street. Okay, so Mersey Street is where we're on. And we have some sort of school. So with a road angle, this should be reasonably findable. Okay, we have Mersey Street. And we had Melrose Road. And we had Melbourne Road as well. If I'm not responsible mistaken or maybe that was yes we had Melbourne Road and Lifey Crescent so we started on a north angle did we start on Lifey Street we started at a three-way which I imagine could be this oh but obviously I'm going to check so the road bends to go roughly north, yes. And then as it goes north, we meet the intersection between Lifey and Melbourne. So that is this intersection here, and we came east and then north to get to that. And given that we started at a three-way, we would be here. Okay, not quite there. The mapping is a little bit odd, but we still get the 5k. Okay. Finally, we're in Hawaii. I haven't covered it in this video, but perhaps I can use this as an explanation of general 5k tips. So we have Puhala Drive and Analoa Bule Ainaloa Boulevard. In terms of Hawaii identification tips, in particular, these green street signs, very Hawaiian sounding names, but no long antenna at the front of the car. So we're not in, uh, you know, Guam or NMI. So Pahawa and Ainaloa, and we're on Pahawa Drive. And now all I have to do is find that intersection. So I'm heading southwest along... Uh, I believe Ainaloa Drive, and uh, yes, Ainaloa Drive, and we have 37th Avenue, which indicates that I'm probably heading into a city with uh, numbered streets. 
so heading this direction is probably a good idea. Now, I'm finding a surprising lack of information along this road, but it's quite a long, very straight southwest road. So my suspicion is that I may actually be able to scan for this road. I'm going to look for an Inaloa Drive. Okay, I haven't found an Ina Lower Drive through my pinpointing. So now what I'm going to do is turn around and head the other direction. So I'm going to head uh, northeast instead. And hope that uh, more fruitful info arrives this way. And we immediately hit an intersection with a larger road. <laughs> and this says Ina Lower. So Ina Lower may actually be fairly scannable. But I am not seeing it from an initial pass. So I'm going to keep moving. Perfect. We get a state highway sign. So using highway signs for the first time in this video, uh, this is the 130. Now the routes on Hawaii are arranged uh, by number, so ones and twos on this island, threes on this island, fours on this island, uh, and I believe uh, also on this island, and then we have uh, sixes, sevens, and eights on this island, and fives on this island. So the 130 is down here, and we came off of it on the So we have come uh, southwest on the 130, and ah, here is Ina Lower Boulevard. We had 37th Avenue, and we had um, Lauhala Drive, was it? Puhala Drive. So now it is simply a matter of scanning for Puhala. Puhala is here, and that will be our final 5k of the video. So, 125k completed in just under 20 minutes. That's pretty good time. Uh, and with that, that concludes this video. I hope that the tips and uh, information that I've been able to share with you help you pinpoint things a lot quicker and that you have a lot of fun uh, playing some moving games or pinpointing locations in Oceania or wherever. I will see you, hopefully, in the next video. As always, thanks very much for watching, and bye-bye.